Right, good day, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone, wherever you are, and welcome to the second episode of HR Confidential. This evening, we have a topic that is on everyone's uh, mind, and many times in life, we all came across those uh, very similar situations. What to do after you lost your job? To make sure you land the job ASAP is the topic for this evening, and who else can give us a bit of guidance on this sensitive topic, other than the absolute star of the show, guys? Anka Ionescu. Good evening, Anka. How are you? Good evening, Andrew. I'm very, very excited tonight. I love this topic. And thank you so much for having me again. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I couldn't do this uh, without you. So there you go. <laughs> You're the star of the show, not me. Now, I hear this evening we have a present for one lucky viewer or more. I feel generous. Maybe there will be two, maybe there will be more, depending on the time. Absolutely brilliant. So guys, if you want to win a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, Anka, like, share, subscribe, and interact with us during the show. And one hour ago, we posted on LinkedIn that in one hour, the show will start. Those of you that need help and um, drop us a line, we'll get selected by Anka and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one session with her. These are the rules. No rules. Just interact with us, uh, comment on LinkedIn, and you will be uh, chosen, two of you. Now, Anka, I want to ask you something, because the topic tonight is very, very hot. Were you ever unemployed in your life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely yes. Definitely yes. I was unemployed in my life. Right. Right. Um, Aren't we all at some point? And how did you feel about it? Or what did you do to get out of that uh, situation? I'm trying to keep this uh, PG-13, so I can't really express my feelings, but it's definitely not a good place to be. What is the first thing that you suggest we do if we wake up one day and we're unemployed? Good. So... Um, I would start with uh, your mental attitude. I would continue with actionable steps. And in here we can tackle uh, uh, two major, um, uh, two major uh, fields where we can actually do something about it. So I suggest we start with the, with the emotional state, which I believe is the most important aspect, and it's a make-or-break situation. Right, okay. So let's start with the state of mind. The state of mind is very important. Uh, many, many times people fall in depression. Yeah, I'm not embarrassed to say I'm one of them. Yeah, because uh, at some point in my life when I was really caring, about the jobs a lot, uh, it hurt me. It hurt me bad that I had to um, end my uh, my job with the specific company. Now, luckily, in my entire career, I've uh, only been sacked twice. <laughs> okay, the rest of the times I decided it was uh, the time to uh, to move on. Now, how do we avoid depression? How do we avoid falling into that trap? I had a I had a very tough training uh, when it comes to that, and it came from personal experience, and also came from people that I reached out to in order to um, understand what my mental state should be and what should I stop doing, so I don't fall into depression. And for me, the rule is very simple. First of all, we are not what we do. We tend to, to uh, tell ourselves and define ourselves what, by what we do. Oh, I'm a sales manager. Oh, I'm a CEO. Oh, I'm a uh, whatever job you're currently doing. But you are more than that. And definitely, if you lose that job, it doesn't mean that you cease to exist as a person. So the first thing I would do would be, uh, obviously, the day of the firing, I would definitely take that time for myself. Do something that brings you pleasure. Don't think about that. You're not what just happened to you. Uh, there is a time to learn your lesson, definitely. 
but you can look back at things after the shock phase uh, uh, kind of faded and uh, you can go back and ask yourself why do I need a job for what's going to happen when do I plan on landing a job and ask yourself all these questions and try to write them on a piece of paper and try to make peace with yourself irrespective of the motive you lost your job for yeah sometimes you get fired sometimes you simply resign because there is something going on that's really not aligned with your own values therefore you need to have your own mission your own why very clear for yourself and something that helped me tremendously especially in the last couple of years where uh, we all know that things didn't happen uh, um, in a good way for a number of reasons like the pandemic and like uh, uh, whatever happened in the workforce out there was try to make yourself useful and understand that right now your only job is to land yourself a job brilliant very nice uh, very nicely said now uh, that's the first day basically yeah where you don't have to uh, uh, put a blame on anyone you just gotta relax a bit now what happens in the second day because that's when the fun starts <laughs> Well, yeah, in the second day, uh, what I discovered, uh, I'm talking about personal experience and other people's experience as well, we start blaming. So the second day is the rage day. Yeah, the first day you're in shock and the second day you start, uh, you start blaming situations, facts, colleagues, bosses, friends, you blame the system, you blame, no, guys. So you have to, first of all, make peace with the setup. Just prepare yourself and the question is not if you're going to get fired one day. The question is, what are you going to do if you get fired? So rule number one for the second day is understand the setup, yeah, and accept the setup. You may not yeah. like it, but, you know, it's that kind of planet where night follows the day and backwards. So, And the entire second day... You do just that. <laughs> I I was doing something else. I was doing things that uh, could be said on YouTube, but couldn't be couldn't be said on the on the TV. Right? When do you start actively looking for a job? Let's say on the second day you're a bit hangover or something. Third day, what do you do? Some people might uh, might uh, judge me very harshly for for what I'm saying right now. But you you your mindset should be ready for that from the day you actually land the job. So I'm not even talking about your second day or, of uh, you just being fired or whatever. It is what it is. So you just have to, to deal with the situation in, in that sense. If you would like to attract good things into your life, you better set your mind straight from the get-go. So prepare yourself for whatever happened happens uh get your plan b in place from the second you are uh, building a career you know your intentions are right and if your intentions are right then opportunities will be there for you right fair enough now let's talk facts what do i have to do to get a job as soon as possible after my uh, morning period, let's say, yeah, of, of a couple of days or five days or a week. Right. Let's start actively looking for a job. How do I do it? First of all, I would have a very good look at my CV. And second of all, I will uh, update my LinkedIn profile, which is something that you should actually uh, be doing uh, on, uh, on daily basis or regularly, if you see what I mean. So right. uh, uh, these are the actionable steps. Right. So let's start with the first one. Yeah. Uh, creating a CV or um, adjusting the CV or the LinkedIn. Which one do you do you prefer to talk about first? 
I'm going to start with the CV because LinkedIn actually is a, is a follow up on, on what's your own CV and they should be in sync. But uh, uh, the majority of uh, uh, jobs you apply for obviously will require a CV unless you're being headhunted. And, uh, you know, sometimes your CV is not even relevant because your your reputation precedes you and people know about you and they just contact you. But let's talk um normal situation of people that are not necessarily uh, uh, famous or very out there. So CV is a very important, is your business card. Yeah. So it's your, it's your, uh, uh, it's your first impression if you, uh, if you want. And obviously you have to care for the way your CV looks in the same way you care about uh, when you're meeting a first a uh, person for the first time. So your CV is a direct reflection of you. Now, um, I'm encouraging everyone that uh, uh, comes in contact with me and they are asking me, how should I do this and how should I do that to keep their CV very short? Yeah, uh, it's a known fact that uh, as recruiters, we, we when we launch a campaign and we try to hire people, we spend more time uh, uh, microwaving popcorn actually than reading CVs. So imagine I'm being blasted with 100 CV, which one will I read? So you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person who's going to read your CV and you need to make it as appealing as possible for that person to actually call you and say, you know what, I love what I see and I would like you to come for an interview. Very nicely said. Now, what? how does a CV stand out? What do you do? You, you use capital letters and emojis next to, to your name and date of birth. How should Definitely. it look like? Definitely not. So uh, CV, obviously, we are talking about professionals and uh, uh, you are getting a job. So you're getting into a professional uh, world. Therefore, your CV should look professional. I like to use an uh, ATS compliant uh, CV format, which I'm encouraging everyone to start reading about it because it is crucial in uh, in an electronic era where everything uh, um, happens online yeah you have to know what to avoid and you have to know what to highlight what i would like to emphasize however is la that you should avoid pictures you should avoid tables you should avoid emojis and you should avoid links there's a whole list of things that you should avoid on your CV. What I'm trying to get at is I would like to see your core competencies and achievements in the first part of the CV. Therefore, it makes sense for me to say, please place them in the first part of the CV, in the first page of your CV, and then continue with your professional experience and try not to note down the entire job description of your previous job under the title. I am not interested in everything you've done. Try to pick three, uh, maximum three, uh, very important tasks, yeah? If you can relate these tasks also with the achievements, because this is, for me, this is it. This is a deal breaker. I don't care what you've done in a certain position unless you can prove and show that you've achieved something while holding that position. Um, and that's pretty much uh, it. Right. Nicely said. Now, you know what I used to do uh, uh, when uh, whenever I was looking for a job or, or changing jobs? I was taking two, three days off. Yeah, obviously, those critical days, the morning days, how I like to call them. And then... I had a schedule every morning, nine o'clock, I was waking up, having my coffee, sending uh, two dozens of CVs. At some point, I was even sending them blindly. I wasn't even reading the entire job description. Um, then in the afternoon, then I was I was done uh, for a few hours. Then in the afternoon, I know in the afternoon, they release uh, the new positions. So in the afternoon, I was having another go. I was sending another half a dozen, dozen, two dozen CVs. And so on, so on for a couple of weeks. 
until or a couple of days, it depends, until I was getting that phone call. Is that a good strategy in your view? The good strategy is you should never stop uh, sending your CVs. That's the very good strategy. The second good thing about what you just said, in my view, is the fact that you have uh, um, you've seen this as a full-time job, and it is. Finding it is. a job, it is a full-time job. Now, what I try to uh, teach people that are reaching out to me, and I, I'm trying to tell the viewers right now, is that literally, guys, you need to you need to understand that you have to invest some time in really reading the job descriptions of the positions you're applying for and try to tweak your CV in a way that will mirror the requirements. I'm not saying lie in your CV, attention. I'm just saying if they require a certain uh, uh, hard skill that for whatever reason you left it out from your CV, try to place it back and treat every job application with utmost seriosity. It's, it's, not, it's not a joke. And maybe that one skill that you didn't mention was a make or break uh, uh, decision for the recruiter not to invite you for the interview. Do you need to spend nine hours a day looking for a job? The answer is yes. Do you like doing that? Maybe not, but this is something that you have to do. And obviously, you need to know that most of the jobs, if we are talking LinkedIn, let's say, are being posted uh, Monday to Wednesday maximum. And whoever does it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they didn't go to the LinkedIn school yet. And this is just a tip for the other side of the planet. So as candidates, wherever comes Monday morning, Tuesday and Wednesday, those are the hot uh, positions. Yeah. No, I did. Most of my jobs were, uh, <laughs> were online because you know how it goes in the corporate world. They don't really want to see you face to face unless they want to hire you. Now, we covered the CV. We covered the depression, which shouldn't be there. We covered the bashing and sending dozens of CVs a day in the morning, in the afternoon to all the new jobs to be among the first ones that apply. Now, in terms of LinkedIn, because they're going to get your CV, they're going to read it, and then they're going to do some background checks on you. Hopefully not, but they do. <laughs> How should LinkedIn be like so you got a fair chance for the job? We got exactly five minutes max to wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. So uh, LinkedIn, again, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's one of the most important platforms you could actually be. So if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, go ahead and create one. Your LinkedIn profile should reflect exactly what's in your CV. So try to align them. And if you decided to leave some of the jobs out or whatever, do the same on your LinkedIn profile. Third of all, you need to engage on LinkedIn. So uh, having a LinkedIn profile is not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. You have to use the correct tag words. You have to know how to set up your headline. You need to know what to write in the summary. You need to know how to ask recommendations. This is something that as a recruiter, the second I saw your CV, I'm going onto your LinkedIn and I'm going to check. So it's not only um, good enough to have a profile. You need to engage on LinkedIn. You need to post a couple of times a day. If you don't have anything meaningful to post, then you have to engage with people who do have something to say. You need to know how to comment, when to comment, what a meaningful comment, and so on and so forth. So that is... Uh, that is the secret of a uh, good job applying on LinkedIn and actually uh, um, having a better chance for your CV to stand out, to be picked, to be shortlisted, and then possibly uh, for you to be invited for an interview. Second aspect, try sure. to reach out to people 
that are in charge of the business you try to land. LinkedIn is a professional network. It's the only place on the planet that's on social media, social media, that's okay to connect with people without feeling embarrassed or gender biased or whatever. It's okay to speak to the CEO of the company. It's okay to do a bit of a cyber stalking and go there and say, hi, I saw you doing this, that, and the other. So be a bit smart and be a bit approachable and do not be afraid to talk to these people. Hold on. Sorry to cut you off. Regarding this topic, I do have a problem with uh, with uh, stalking uh, CEOs and so on. Now, uh, proud or not, I am a CEO. I am being approached uh, every day. Guys, do not approach the CEO asking him if he has a job for you. You're not going to like the answer if you're going to get an answer. I am being approached every day by people that I have never met in my life uh, asking me like uh, we're friends since school, do you have a job for me? Without even introducing themselves, without even seeing if it's the right uh, time or place or um, uh, industry for them. The second one, because i got to say something that that bugs me for a while. If you start commenting on LinkedIn, please make sure you know what you're commenting. LinkedIn is not your Facebook. Stop taking selfies. I don't want to see your legs. I, don't, I only want to see meaningful stuff. Is that fair enough, Anka? It is fair enough. Actually, LinkedIn is a professional network. Uh, in my entire experience, I had to block a couple of people because of inappropriate content comments uh, messaging. I think they got the message. Finally, if they didn't, uh, it is what it is. But generally speaking, I think people do have a certain conduct uh, when it comes to LinkedIn and they know it should be a bit more elevated. Uh, when a recruiter posts a job, you can 99% of the time see the recruiter's details. And yeah. uh, obviously you can approach that recruiter because that's basically their job and they will be happy to have a direct contact with you uh, outside the, the job search engine. Uh, rule number one, know, uh, know what you're talking about and understand how you should be approaching people. And keep it professional. Now, um, these are the efforts we have to make to get a job. However, when you do get that phone call, it might come in a few days, it might come in a couple of weeks, it might come in a couple of months. You're going to have to face the monster that people think. You're going to have to face the HR that's going to rip you apart and it's going to ask you all the annoying questions. Are we going to talk about it in the next one? Definitely. I think it's a, it's a, it's a big, um, it's a big boo-boo for a lot of people. And, uh, uh, to be honest, in certain positions, uh, um, it's, it's the highest score of, I hate getting that job just because I have to go through this phase. Right. But more about this, this topic next week at the next, uh, one. And next week we're going to talk about the annoying questions or the right questions and answers an HR uh, asks you. Anka, thank you ever so much for tonight. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much again, Andrew. And I'm looking forward to meet the winners and to work with them closely. And for the rest of you guys, I'm going to see you next week. Join us again next week and find out what are the right answers to the right questions at a job interview. And until then... Take it easy, beautiful people. Have a good night.